let's start a new meeting. I don't have any microphones. The A and B can turn on. That's what it looks like. Okay, let's exit our meeting. End meeting for all. There you go, it's turned off. So this is the hardware. So I have here a, a Raspberry Pi Zero W with, uh, that I mounted into this um, this junction box uh, with with the wires coming out. Um, what I'm using here is black for ground, red for power, and the blue is the data pin going into GPIO pin 18. Um, there's nothing special about that. Here I have uh, some WS2812B lights uh, wrapped in uh, Tupperware. I think it looks cool, like, uh, like a beacon. I've used this for my uh, my audio reactive work as well, uh, project as well. So I'm just reusing it because I don't really have a dance party every day. And we're going to plug this in to, uh, I'm gonna use a power bank, but in real life, I'll have it plugged into the wall because this does draw quite a bit of power. And since it is five volts, I don't need anything special in between. So I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna take a look at how this works. Hey there, so you just saw a really quick demo of the aim beacon in action where it detected a zoom meeting and turned on my beacon here. Uh, it works pretty well with zoom, still a little wonky with Microsoft Teams because I need to filter by not just the process but the Windows name as well and the Windows name can change if you're using Teams, uh, but I have more information on that here in this GitHub. Uh, between this GitHub page and easyprogramming.net, you should get all the you shouldn't have all the information you need to set this up both software and hardware uh, locally. I have some explanations on the commands that I'm running as well as the hardware setup. Um, for my demo, I am using a new pixel strip, so it's WS2812B Lite. It has three connectors, red and black for power and ground, and a blue for um, connected to pin 18 for the data. Uh, because these are WS2812B lights, uh, I didn't need anything special. They run off five volts. I didn't need a resistor or transistor or anything. Um, they're addressable lights. So how this works is pretty similar to a lot of my other projects where, which uh, runs a Flask app on a Raspberry Pi and a script somewhere else makes a rest, rest call to that Pi. In this case, it only works on Windows for now. I will look into Linux and Macs uh, in the future. If you want to contribute, feel free to do that. Uh, it makes a rest call from your local machine if it detects Zoom or Microsoft Teams is running to your Pi and the Pi does the rest of the work. The one thing to know is after you clone this, you should look at the config.py and make any configuration changes. You need to switch between simple and um, NeoPixel and the LED type. Make sure your Pi address is the same. Uh, is, is good and if you want to pick a theme, um, I explain what those are, it's just just color schemes that I added which is like reddish, bluish, greenish or the defaults which is random. And I do recommend installing everything in a virtual environment in Python 3. Um, it's because it makes it easy to just undo everything, just get rid of it if you mess anything up. Um, it's, it's safe and I go through all of the uh, requirements that you need. So it works via a scheduled task, so I'll just go through my scheduled task here. So I called it at my enemy meeting, call it wherever you want. Um, the triggers are by default, uh, it'll have like some hours, so you'd want to set it to weekly. Uh, I have everything selected and running every one minute because I'm testing. I wanted to, wanted to run this demo, uh, make sure it works. Uh, it runs every one minute from 12.01 for one day up until 12 a.m. the next day. Uh, but you can change this to, let's say, you know, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., which would be 10 hours, every one minute or every five minutes. On Windows, you can't have an interval of less than one minute, so one minute is the best that you can do, and that's what I have done here. The actions uh, is, so I'm pointing to the Python script in my virtual environment, so you can see it's VENV inside scripts, and we're using Python W.exe. The reason we're doing this is because the Python W allows the Python script to run in the background. Otherwise, if you do just Python, you'll see a command prompt window open up on your taskbar somewhere. Uh, it might throw you off. This way, it happens all in the background. And in the argument section, you just have the full path to your check proc. Py. Uh, I'm sure you can do this in a way so that it activates the the uh, virtual environment first, but I, I figured just just put in the full paths uh, for now. No conditions, no 
uh, settings changes conditions. You know, start only when the computer is on AC power. Um, allow tasks to be run on demand. Yeah, sure, why not? And history is disabled. Okay, let's close this. I'm going to enable it, and uh, it'll run every one minute um, for a while. But let's take a look at um, what the Pi setup looks like. So I'm in my var www.html LED site. So you can get all of this, all of these files from uh, the GitHub. So you can clone this repository and just use what's in the Raspberry Pi, or you can go into the Raspberry Pi Pi dist directory and just get this uh, LED.zip file and unzip it instead of just cloning everything and it will have all of these files here including the flask app which is in led.py comes with two endpoints which is the, the basic one which is looking for url parameters of type status theme uh, and a meeting status so i have it running here which is telling you whether someone is in a meeting or not so it does save something in memory uh, you can set this up to save in a database if you want but i'm saving this into a file called neopixel status.txt zero for no meeting one for meeting and the cool thing you can do with this is that because it's a rest api you can have a display in like on a website somewhere so this is a like a master controller that i use for controlling the rest of my house uh, you may have seen some of these in my other tutorials so if i refresh this you know it says false uh and when I, once i'll when i will be in a meeting i'll show you that this will turn to true and this will turn to true here so you can you know change that into an icon which i plan to do later on and i have all of the information that you need in the installation section of the raspberry pi um, set up here as well as links to my previous tutorials where uh, i did go over how to set up all of these step by step okay so let's take a look at what this looks like from the back end so i have this running you know every one minute uh, in my task scheduler uh, in my pi i have if we go to cd var everything is here um, including the led.py which is the flask application everything is running in, behind apache here um, i have zoom here Let's see I'll also open up my meeting status page here let's zoom in so you know it's false here go in here Okay, let's start my Zoom meeting. So everything happens every one minute. So on the next minute, so it's 12.52.52. So I'm just gonna start a meeting really quickly. Uh, I won't join audio and in about uh, a few seconds, the task scheduler should run and my lights should turn on. And as you can see, it turned on to random. Um, looks, looks pretty cool, right? And if I go into my meeting status here, if I refresh this, you can see that it says true instead of false. Um, refresh here and I, I did, did a test a little earlier so it does say true here so once I turn it back off it'll go back to false and in my task scheduler if I do uh, refresh this you'll see that it ran uh, at 11:53 p.m. and it'll run again at 11:54. so uh, before it hits 11:54, I will turn off my meeting I will get out of my meeting not this one this one and a meeting for all. Once the script runs again, it's, it'll see that my Zoom process is no longer running and it will turn the lights off. So I have just, uh, just about 10 seconds left. It takes a few seconds over um, the minute marker to run and, and it did turn off. And if I do here, if I refresh here, you'll see that the flag turned false. Uh, and here the flag turned to false again. Um, it's pretty cool. So uh, you, uh, because I have these endpoints set up, you can actually control the lights through the browser. It doesn't have to be through the through the script. So if you want to set up, you do your own setup instead of doing a task schedule. You can do that as well. So I'm just going to disable it so that it doesn't just override. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. So I'll just turn it off. Turn it on. Sorry, on. Uh, and then I'll do a uh, theme of nature. So you can do nature, cool, Valentine's for reddish color. You can see that it turns to green. The one thing to know is that you can't just do uh, like you know, cool and expect it to do anything. Um, there's a check here that says if the lights are already turned on, it won't do anything so that it doesn't override what's already there. So you have to turn it off first. Once it's turned off, and then you can do theme equals to, uh, let's do Valentine's. on Valentine's. There you go, and it turns red, reddish. So um, it's pretty cool. And this does turn on because the uh, 
the uh, NeoPixel status that TXT is now a one instead of a zero, right? Uh, if I turn it back off, the cat again, we'll see it turns to zero. So it's just it's a pretty simple setup, pretty similar to uh, all the other things that I've done. Uh, it works really well with my master controller here uh, as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the this aim beacon. Um, we hope you can you know put some of this to use. If you do have any questions, do ask. If you want to contribute to um, other OSs, let me know. Happy to look and uh, pull in if they look good. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great one.